All right, this is probably the last you see of this. I'm finally doing the pictures that I'm supposed to do with it on tomorrow or Thursday, today being Tuesday. And I really don't have a need for it after that, and I will probably shave it off. Um, hair's a little messy too. But I'm gonna talk about Sean Shirk's title shot against BJ Penn today. Um, and of course I did my, a bit of a crap on uh, BJ Penn getting a title shot. Um, against Joe Stevenson and of course I got a lot of flack for it and this just goes to show that BJ Penn fans are in a way the most loyal on the planet and in a way the most close-minded about their hero which is weird because I don't know I respect BJ Penn's skills it just doesn't change the fact I still really don't think he deserved that tell shot but today it's Sean Shirk Okay, now of course Shirk is getting a title shot against BJ Penn, don't quote me on the UFC number, but it's in one of the pay-per-views coming up, I think 84, I think. Um, you can look it up for yourself though. Um, I'm not good with the remembering which number, which pay-per-view. Going on, we have basically him getting a title shot after getting stripped of the title for steroid abuse, which of course is not conclusive whether or not he was doing steroids, I'm not going to offer an opinion on whether he did. I already did offer it. I don't know if I did a video about it, but I think I've probably have gone over it at length. I just don't feel like doing a video about whether I feel Sean Shirk did steroids or not. That being said, I'm always a little, I don't really care for this whole idea that a champion gets stripped and then gets a, a, in a title shot right afterwards. Um, a good point of this would be Tim Sylvia, of course, was stri stripped for steroids uh, and then got a title shot against Frank Near. So it's not like this is without precedent, but I think this is something the UFC should probably look into. Um, this whole idea of giving a guy who just got stripped of a title, not not just for steroids, I'm saying, but for any kind, for any for any reason other than injury, I personally think that he should at least have one fight uh, fight the number one contender. Now, admittedly, in the current lightweight division, I mean, who would you really consider the number one contender? I mean, there's Roger Huerta, but that would be probably a bit of a formality um, because I think. Probably most people pick Shirk in that fight because you have, if you put Shirk up against another wrestler in the 155 pound division, I do believe he'll probably win because I think he is probably the best wrestler in the division. Which means, you know, guys like Clay, Clay Guida, Roger Ware to Tyson Griffin, all the Tysons improving uh, rapidly, Frank Edgar and so on would probably get out wrestled and he would probably win a decision. Nonetheless, I don't know, it's just. I'm very, I don't even know what the UFC really should do. Well, okay, I know what they should do. They should sign some of the Pride elites because they haven't brought an elite Pride 155 pounder. And I think honestly, Pride fighters at 155 would be a little bit better suited off than some of the higher weight classes. Because as we know, some of the Pride fighters didn't cut as much weight. We've seen this with guys like Vanderlei and Shogun looking as small as they do against the UFC fighters. I'm not saying this is why they're losing. I'm just pointing this out. They don't seem to cut as much weight. Now, with the 155ers, they would probably be cutting around the same kind of weight to make weight at 155 as the UFC ones. I think Shirk would probably be larger. That's about it. And signing a guy like Gomi, they had, of course, Hellboy Hansen and Mitsuhiro Ishida, and then basically boned them in the ass, but um, still. But signing someone of a top 10 nature to fight BJ Penn would probably be the ultimately best thing they could do. Because um, that kind of builds up BJ Penn. Or have or have one of them fight Sean Shirk in a number of contenders match to build up Sean Shirk as a legitimate top 10 155er. Because I've said it before and I've said it again. Um, I'll say it again. is It's very hard to be ranked in the top 10 without a top 10 win. Someone that's kind of universally recognized as top 10 and Shirk doesn't have that at 155. I mean, his wins are over Kenny Florian, Ernie Franca. I think that's it. I could be wrong. I, I, I get the sneaking suspicion I'm missing somebody. But although Kenny Florian is an up and comer and someday maybe a top 10 fighter, I don't. Personally, I don't think so. But he, he has some legitimately improving skills. And Franca is a decently well respected fighter. These are not top 10 wins, and it's hard to be in the top 10 when you don't have any top 10 wins. And that's personally what I would like to see is them bring in someone, um, 
suck up the pride and if you're going to say that you have the best fighters, regardless of whether they are the best fighters right now, but the, the former pride lightweights are viewed and somewhat like rightly so because of course the UFC went away from the 155 pound division for some time and now we're going back to it as the top 10 in the world is generally from old pride except for BJ Penn and Shirk. Um, sign someone, bring them in. If you have the kind of confidence that you really do have the best fighters, you can, you know, make it like a three-fight deal. Um, if nothing else, if you really have the confidence that your fighters are better, you can just use him to build up. You could have him lose to Sean Shirk and then lose to other to two of your other guys, and then you have some legitimate cred for top ten lightweights. Of course, in my personal opinion, of course, that Zufa doesn't think that they have the best lightweights, but they will continue to market as they believe as such. Um, so anyways, Shirk, getting the title shot, don't agree with it, feel free to leave your opinions, but I prefer not to get the fanboy response like I did with BJ Penn, I don't think I will because I just don't think Shirk has the same level of fan support, but I don't know, here's what, here's what I want you to do, I want you to post, I don't want you to randomly flame me and say, well Shirk deserves that shot, um, basically what I would, say, I would suggest is, you disagree with me? put what you think should be done. If you agree with me, you can put what you sh should be done as well, because I kind of, I gave my opinion, sign a pride guy, have him fight Sean Shirk, and that would probably be the best way. Now, of course, you put BJ Penn on a bit of a hiatus then, but I don't really have a problem with that. It allows BJ Penn to continue training and getting better. Um, if you really want to, you can make it two pride guys and have him fight a pride guy, have Shirk fight a pride guy. There you go. Just, and it doesn't have to be a pride guy, but I'm just saying pride because most of the top 10 lightweights at some time were pride, Gilbert Melendez, Tetsuya Kawajiri, Mitsuya Rashida, uh, Takenori Gomi, uh, Hellboy Hansen if you consider him as such, um, the list goes on, but you know, you, you could bring in a guy who never fought in pride like Jay-Z and that'd be cool, the K1's pretty much got him locked up um, for life a little bit. Um, but, you know, someone. And it would be hard, but there was a time when this would have been very easy to get their contracts when they originally bought Pride. And they could have they could have Hellboy and Ishida right now if they agreed to pay them the money that their Pride contracts said. And it wasn't an outrageous amount of money. I mean, that's my problem. And people are going to say that they don't deserve the money, maybe. You may right but then they they went out and gave Marcus Aurelio of course a 20k pay raise and Marcus Aurelio is not a top 10 fighter he's making 35 grand to fight 35 grand to win that's 70 grand people you could be paying Hellboy Hansen or Sheeta I do believe the details were 13k and 13k that that's a 30,000 if they win versus a 70,000 if Marcus Aurelio wins now I mean mind you Marcus Aurelio is a lot less likely win because he's a bit of a one-trick pony. Has really no striking, but um, at the same time, you're still paying him more just to fight than you would be paying Hellboy and Ashida to win. Anyways, that's my rant on the Sharnshirt title shot. Leave your thoughts later.